start off this topic about talking about the way we can classify books. So one way that uh, several sources in the literature propose is to break them down into four types. And in my mind, these types go from the worst type of wound that you can have down to the best type of wound that you can have. Now, of course, there's no good wound to have, there's no best wound, but you'll see in a second how uh, some of these look and are harder to treat than others. So, the first type is a necrotic wound. Now, this is, has a characteristic appearance. Uh, this wound is going to look black because the tissue that is covering the wound is completely dead. So there's, uh, it's composed of completely devitalized epithelium. So there's no uh, nutrient supply, there's very poor oxygenation and very poor blood flow. So this tissue completely becomes necrotic. Uh, now the reason that this makes this wound hard to manage, uh, or one thing that it makes this wound unique, is that, um, you know, let, to, to have this discussion, we need to back up a little bit to a process that happens in wound healing normally, um, which is called autolysis. And this is a process that happens in the body naturally. So let's say you have a wound. This is a healthy tissue. And then there was some kind of trauma. You know, some kind of trauma happened. And now because of this trauma, we have, uh, we have tissue that is impaired. So not fully necrotic yet, but this is, uh, this is epithelium that has to come off. Um, so if you have trauma, what happens is that there are cells in the body, mostly these are macrophages, that come in and they release enzymes that travel to this interface. And what these enzymes do is they liquefy the material that's in here. And what this allows to happen is for these two tissue planes to separate. And this allows this top part of the wound, which contains tissue that's dying, to come off. And this is something that happens when you have a scab over your wound and it comes off very easily. Uh, this is a good way to think about what autolysis looks like. When you have necrotic, a necrotic wound, there's such poor uh, perfusion to the area that macrophages can't come in, so this process can't happen. So autolysis is completely disturbed. So, Moving on to the next type of wound is what is called a sloughing wound. So you can see a picture of one such wound over here. And what it's characterized by is that there's a thick yellow covering. It's like a fibrinous, uh, fibrinous material that completely covers the wound. Um, it's different from this thin yellowish material that normally will cover a wound as it's healing. Uh, this is much thicker, it's harder to remove, so it's not completely necrotic, but it's the same idea that there's some kind of material that's, that's covering healthy or, you know, tissue that's trying to be healthy underneath. Um, this material is mostly made out of uh, fibrin, a serous exudate, um, leukocytes, and this may or may not have bacteria. The next type of wound is a granulating. So a granulating wound has granulation tissue in it. And granulation tissue is the tissue with which the body tries to heal itself. Uh, so this tissue is rich in collagen, it's rich in proteoglycans, and it's very highly vascularized, which gives these wounds this characteristic red or deep pink appearance. The next type of wound, the fourth type, is an epithelializing wound. Epi, the, the, uh, that's a mouthful, right? So these type of wounds are more superficial. 
Uh, and you, you can see here that there's some evidence of pink edges to the wound. There are these islands of pink material on the surface. Uh, and usually there's very low to, you know, to no exudate to, to these type of wounds. They're usually more dry. You know, if you can think about these other wounds, especially sloth and rainwing, they may or may not put out a lot of exudate. These, um, these usually will not. So, and then finally, I mean, I know we talked about the four types, but uh, as will become important for our further discussion, is that any type, any one of these wounds can become infected. And it's hard to tell when a wound is, uh, when a, and it's hard to tell how much infection a wound carries, but it's usually possible to tell if a wound is infected or not, even to a lay person. So if there's a purulent um, exudate that you can see, uh, usually there will be an increase in pain. You know, wounds are already painful, but if there's an acute increase in pain, um, maybe there's an increase in redness. And there might be, you know, systemic signs or symptoms, so such as a fever, chills, um, uh, like a high blood pressure, high heart rate, or a high white count on labs. Uh, so usually the way we define an infected wound is there's greater than 10 to the fifth uh, organisms per gram of tissue. Now this is a rough estimate and it's hard even to a trained eye to really say um, how much infection a wound is carrying. So uh, that wraps up our description of how these wounds are classified so we can move on to talk about how some dressings are.